There's just something about levels involving water that makes many a gamer go, ugh. In fact, we've actually given you the 10 worst. But once the winter months roll in and that water turns to solid form, you've got yourself an entirely new, somewhat more tolerable trope of video game design, commonly referred to as the snow level. The 10 you see here, despite their chilly appearances, actually warm our hearts. Hey, I'm Nervous Nick for Screw Attack's Top 10 Snow Levels. Number 10. Ask any gamer which Mario Kart is the best, and if they're blinded by nostalgia like I am, they'll tell you Mario Kart 64. This kart racing classic brought us two Winter Wonderlands with Sherbet Land and Frappe Snowland. But let's be honest here, that snowman minefield, nah, everybody hates that about Frappe Snowland. And besides, Sherbet Land has penguins. A cave of penguins. Careening around corners dodging flightless birds made you feel like a pro by the time you came out the other side of that cave much more so than avoiding immobile snow people. There's a reason Sherbet Land made a return for Mario Kart Wii. Number nine. And speaking of feeling like a pro, driving past penguins just can't compare to the stuff you do in World 4 of Super Mario Bros. 2. L let me just describe what happens in chronological order. First, you pull a rocket ship out of the ground. That's it, I could just stop right there. World 4 would be plenty justified for number nine. But then you go into Matrix Dodge, an onslaught of bees armed with forks. Does it stop there? No. Another rocket ship out of the ground, and there are now whales with vegetables growing out of their backs. Super Mario Bros. 2. World 4. Next. Number 8. We have no idea where this basic Windows 3.1 freeware takes place, but the Ski Free Mountain is a pretty interesting place? Step back for a second. Step way, way back. What in the holy crap is going on? You've got walking trees, peeing dogs, skiers getting flattened, and two man-eating yetis at the bottom. We don't know where this place is or what it's even called, but technically the whole game is a snow level. A snow level where in the early 90s, all of us have killed some time. And a few skiers. Number seven. Leave it to Sonic the Hedgehog to start a level with a bay. In Sonic 3, the fifth zone starts off like, Oh my gosh, I'm snowboarding! Snowboards, yeah! Soaring through the slopes and slaloms, there's nothing that can stop you now except for that wall of ice. And okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ice cap zone. Home of swingy platforms, robot penguins, iceberg surfing, and some of the best music in all of Sonic history. Number six. TMNT 2 for NES, as you may know, was a port of the 1989 arcade classic, but it was inferior in every single way due to technological restrictions. To compensate, Konami opted to give gamers two levels the arcade version never got. A really long and annoying dojo level, and of course, a snow level. Scene 3 featured the worst hailstorm you can possibly imagine, foot soldiers who have successfully weaponized snowballs, and robot snowmen with heat-seeking missiles. But the coolest thing about it was that it acted like an extra subplot of the Turtles' adventure, which was exclusive to the NES, by the way, in which you save New York from this massive snowstorm. And how do you do it? By fighting a polar bear greaser at the end. How else? Number five. Mario's first foray into the third dimension brought us to two wintry worlds, but only one of them had sliding penguins, mama penguins, baby penguins, fake baby penguins, and real baby penguins that you can throw off of a cliff. Plus, it's a good location for doing the green demon challenge. Activate the chasing one up, get all eight red coins and the star before the mushroom gets you. Over a decade and a half later, it's one of the best reasons to revisit the mountain. Number four. Oh, but Mario 64 doesn't know crap about mountains compared to the Elder Scrolls. And I'm not talking about that mountain. Keep moving. Bingo. The almighty throat of the world. The trek to Skyrim's tallest mountain is not a short one. 7,000 steps separate the rest of the land from High Hrothgar where the Greybeards reside, 
And even then, you still aren't anywhere near the peak. Fight through the harsh winds and the aggressive wildlife, and you just might survive long enough to find yourself standing in the presence of the dragons atop the highest point not just in Skyrim, but in all of Tamriel. That's right, chilling out with dragons. And yet, I would still sooner pick a fight with a dragon than I would with a graybeard. Number three. Not even Mega Man X, one of the Super Nintendo's greatest games, is immune to the snow level syndrome. Early in the Chill Penguin stage, you get the coolest, most useful upgrade in the entire game, the dash. Coolest, that is, if you don't count the Hadouken, obviously. It's like going skiing everywhere you go. And how fitting is it that you got it on the snow level? And of course, there's that giant robot suit that you can commandeer to make everything explode with a single punch. Apparently, penguins are just the thing to put in all ice and snow levels, because of all the penguins you've already seen in the levels on this list, there is none more slick, more awesome, or more deadly than the one that awaits you beyond this door. Chill Penguin breathes out ice sculptures of himself and hangs on a hook from the ceiling while he calls in a blizzard from absolutely nowhere. Plus, when you beat him, he gives you a shotgun that shoots balls of ice so you can take the snow to every level. Just awesome. Number two. You don't want to do this, Freeze. You don't have to play Batman Arkham City for too long before you're tasked with finding the coldest point in town, and you all know exactly who that leads you to. Victor Freeze. After you're forced to help him get his suit and freeze ray back, of course there's only one thing that's about to happen. An all-out battle with one of the game's most powerful adversaries. Mr. Freeze at his most powerful forces you to think, to get creative. This guy learns from every hit he takes and eliminates every method of attacking you use on him. Surprise him from the floor vents below? Nuh uh not happening again. For once, Batman is the one in the most danger. For this reason, it was one of the most memorable boss battles in the entire game. There's only one snow level that can top any of those, but before we get there, let's do a recap. Number 10, Sherbet Land. Number nine, World 4 from Mario 2. Number eight, Ski Free Mountain. Number seven, Ice Cap Zone. Number six, the NES exclusive Scene 3. Number five, Cool Cool Mountain. Number four, The Throat of the World. Number three, Chill Penguin Stage. And number two, The Battle Against Mr. Freeze. It's number one. The first level is always one of the most important in an entire game, if not the most important. That's why Green Hill Zone or World 1-1 are so ingrained in the back of our minds. It's a little gutsy to put a snow level as the beginning of a game, but in Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, that's exactly what they did. Piloting a snow speeder with the actual orchestral soundtrack hyping you up, you join the fight against the Empire, taking out drones, ATSTs, and oh my gosh, I get to tie up the ATAT walkers, it's like the movie! Not only does it strike up memories of the films, but just tying up the AT-ATs in and of itself is a really cool way to take down an enemy. Think for a moment just how cool that is to do it in a video game. So many other developers would probably just have you shoot a weak spot when it's exposed, but actually tripping up an enemy to take them down is so much more exhilarating. Because of this war in the winter, the Battle of Hoth is what we all think of first when we think Shadows of the Empire. <laughs> See this and other GT shows and game reviews on the GT Originals iOS app, available now on the App Store.